guys, it's me Zeta here, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about something that I really been wanting to talk about for a while and the reason why I'm doing it now is because lately I've been seeing a lot of like TikToks and stuff of these places, which I mean these cafes have been popular for a long time, but just I've been seeing them a lot on TikTok lately for some reason and people you know recommending these places as like a good touristy option for if you're visiting like Japan and other countries too but I'm mostly going to talk about Japan because that's where I see most of the videos and that's also where I've experienced animal cafes. I've been seeing these videos a lot lately of people um, going to animal cafes in Japan. Animal cafes are also a thing in other countries, they're in the US, they're in my country New Zealand, cat cafes anyway. Cat cafes are definitely more of a thing you see everywhere but you don't see a lot of wild animal cafes in other countries but you do see them a lot in Japan. And I kind of want to talk about them a bit because I do kind of have a problem with a lot of animal cafes that I want to talk about um, and I want to talk about my experience with going to an owl cafe I went to when I was in Tokyo. This was like four years ago and I actually do have a vlog of when I went to the owl cafe and I didn't have a good experience uh, and I talked about it in that video how we didn't like the experience and I kind of regretted going there and giving them my money and even at the time I I wasn't making pet videos during that time was I? I don't think I was. But obviously I've always been an animal person so you know you, you can kind of always tell. If you're an animal person you can tell when something's not right. You know what I mean? Um, now we only went to the owl cafe and we also went to a cat cafe in Japan. Um, didn't go into any other ones but I did see a lot of other ones. We walked past a lot of ones that I was really confused about. Like I remember walking past like a zoo cafe is what it was called and they advertised that they had meerkats and like capybaras and like hedgehogs and stuff and I was like how is that even possible because it was like a tiny little building I didn't go in there because I didn't like the idea of that and I've been seeing a lot of those cafes on TikTok lately of people going to them and showing and sharing their experience will say things like if you're an animal lover you need to go to these cafes and I look at them and I'm like no if you're an animal lover you will not enjoy these trust me I will just Keep in mind, I'm not saying every animal cafe is bad because I do think that there are good ones, but ones that contain wild animals are not good. Like, I'm talking about, you know, meerkats, um, foxes, I've seen a lot of those, otters. If they can't be in the wild for whatever reason, they should be in a sanctuary that actually replicates their environment as best as it can. They shouldn't be in a little small store that's laid out like a cafe and treating these animals like they're dogs and cats. And that's what I've been seeing a lot lately and it's just been really bothering me. First of all, I want to talk about cat cafes because cat cafes is something that I think can be fine a lot of the time. I've been to a cat cafe here in New Zealand um, and I've been to a cat cafe in Tokyo. Both of them were great experiences. The cat cafe I went to uh, was in Akihabara and I do have a vlog of that too, an old vlog if you want to find it. It's quite a popular one I think, I think I've seen other people go to this specific one too. That was a really nice experience, it was super quiet in there, you know they have rules about the cats, it's just a nice kind of peaceful experience where you can play with the cats, you can pet them or let them come to you and this place was really like big, it had like a this huge like tree in the middle of like where the cats could climb and like, I don't know how to explain it, but I'll insert some clips that I took back then. I think the video quality is really bad on those videos, but I'll insert some clips. That was a really nice experience. The um, employees there were super nice and um, the cats all seemed really happy and chill, but I don't really know much about the history of that cafe, to be honest. I don't know if they're rescue cats or where they get the cats from, I don't know. Um, there is also a cafe I've been to in New Zealand that is in my city that was amazing. I've only been there once. I need to go there again. I do have a vlog of that too. Now that cafe is in my, my city Christchurch if you ever come to New Zealand and you come to Christchurch. I highly recommend that cafe because the cats in there are actually rescue cats and a lot of them are up for adoption and they have a wall of all the cats that have been adopted and it's just so lovely. I just love that idea of actually you know helping cats while you know, having a cat cafe. Something I also liked about that cafe is it had a little area where the cats could go into where people couldn't go into. It was like a little walled off area with a little cat door 
where the cats, you know, didn't want to be around people anymore, they could just go in there and just chill in there without people. You couldn't see in there either, but you could tell it was a whole room, you know? And I thought that was really nice. I don't remember if the cafe in Tokyo had a thing like that, but I feel like that's something that all cat cafes should have because, you know, some cats just don't want to be around humans that day. The Owl Cafe. So we went to an Owl Cafe um, because we wanted to go to some kind of animal cafe while we were in Japan because of course we heard about them. We are both, me and my partner, I mean, are both animal lovers and we wanted to check one out. You know, people always recommended you go to one. We weren't sure which one to go to. We saw, you know, advertisements for like puppy cafes and stuff like that. But in the end we decided to go to an owl cafe just for something like totally different. Owls are amazing animals. I would love to see owls so close. i had never seen owls up close before and there was actually people on the street in Akihabara would be standing there with a little platform and they would have an owl on there, a natural owl just sitting on there and then they would give you like a flyer to go to the cafe. Um, which now that I'm thinking about it, just having an owl out in the daytime, you know, not not really great, but you know, we thought, oh, that's so cool. Like we should go there. We looked at the flyer, and the flyer said over 60 owls, like free roam and all this stuff. I think I do, I did show the flyer in the video, and it was like, it said something about how they're free range and stuff. So we're like, oh, that sounds really cool. Free range owls. They'll probably be like flying around and stuff. So we decided to go to that one. Now this cafe, I actually looked up, is actually closed now. It was called like Owl Forest Cafe or something, and it is closed, so I don't know what happened, I don't know why it's closed, but I'm kind of glad it is because um, it wasn't very good. So we went in there, it was kind of hidden in this building, uh, you had to go like up an, up an elevator or something I think, and we go in there and it's this tiny room <laughs> full of owls, there were a lot of owls, so I don't know if there were 60, but there was a lot of owls. Uh, and all of the owls were chained up. Definitely not what we <laughs> thought it would be like. Um, basically you just, you know, you get a drink from a vending machine. So it's technically a cafe because you could get a, like a drink. Just around the cafe there would be different owls just chained up. And we didn't really notice at first. We were like, oh, like these owls, you know, none of them are like moving. They're all just like sitting there. And then we realized it's they couldn't actually move. I actually got a video of one that was trying to move and they were all on these little, you know, leads attached to their leg and they were, the lead was super short so they couldn't actually like move anywhere. Yeah, it was kind of disturbing. We also went, it was kind of the evening when we went. You know, we thought it would be a good time to go when it's evening because owls are nocturnal so then hopefully they would be more active at that time but there were, you know, really bright lights in the cafe, so the owls just wanted to sleep. It's such a small room too, like, the owls, could, even if they weren't chained up, there was no way they could just fly around because of how small and cramped it was. Now they did have, like, you know, rules, obviously, you could pet the owls on their back, but you couldn't, you know, grab them or anything, obviously, which is good. But, you know, it just, it didn't feel right. We did pet some of them, but, I don't know, it just didn't seem like they wanted to be there and we just kind of got sad and felt really bad for the owls so we went there for long. There was also a chicken wandering around. It was in a cage at first, this tiny little cage and they let it out to wander around. Um, but I looked up reviews, I saw people like who took photos of like other animals that were there at some point that I don't think were there when we were there unless we just didn't notice them because we were kind of distracted of how sad it was. Um, but I saw people posting photos of like an otter being there at some point and it was just like in a cage with a little tiny paddling pool beside it as its water area and oh man, I'm glad we didn't see that because we would have been even more upset than we really were. And also when I was looking up reviews recently, I saw a lot of people saying that it's actually meant to be a sanctuary and the owls are apparently rescues, which you know sounds good but like how is this a sanctuary? This is a cafe. I, I wouldn't consider a animal cafe a sanctuary, really, if it's a tiny little room full of chained up owls. Like, how is that any better than whatever condition they were in before? Like, if they were rescued, you know? I, I don't know. It was very odd, and after that we didn't go to any other ones because of that experience. But yeah, it was really sad, and I don't know if there is good owl cafes. I know there are other ones in Japan, uh, maybe there are ones that are a lot better, 
But I don't know. I mean, in my opinion, a better L cafe would be a proper sanctuary with an outdoor enclosure where the owls had free roam in that in big enclosure and could fly around and wouldn't get disturbed during the day being forced to be awake during daylight hours which isn't really a cafe <laughs> so uh, is it even possible to have a humane owl cafe i don't know a lot of ones i've seen are hedgehog cafes i'm also not a fan of from what i've seen usually it's hedgehogs being kept in these enclosures that you know, have bright lights above them. Again, hedgehogs are nocturnal animals. People are given hedgehogs to hold and usually the hedgehog is just like in a ball because it doesn't want to be held. Now a hedgehog cafe like sounds like something that could be possibly done humanely. You know, if maybe it's a dark cafe where the hedgehogs have big enclosures that they you can watch them through and maybe not touch them because some hedgehogs don't like being handled. Like, a lot of people don't handle their hedgehogs if they have them as pets. And then there's ones that have like meerkats and otters and they are treating them like they're cats. You know, they have like cat trees and cat beds for these wild animals. Not saying that cats live like that either in the wild, but you know, cats are domesticated and it's a bit different. We've been breeding cats as pets for years. Um, unlike meerkats and otters, some of them you see like the otter ones, sometimes the otters don't even have an area to swim in or they might just have this like tiny little shallow pool. Some of them I saw had like hamsters and they kept them in these like tiny little cages with these tiny wheels and it's just awful. The good thing is, these cafes always look very clean, but you know, having the bare minimum of a clean enclosure, food and water and shelter isn't really enough, you know? Something I also found out recently is that there was an animal cafe in Tokyo uh, a few years back that was selling a kia from New Zealand, which is an endangered New Zealand bird. This was a few years back. I don't know what happened to the kia in the end because technically like what they were doing was legal. From what I read online they imported the kia from like Europe or something. They were allowed to sell it in Japan. So I think it just seems like Japan just has very loose laws when it comes to animal welfare. Here in New Zealand we have a lot of endangered birds you may know um, and they're very like sacred and special to us and you know everyone cares about our birds. <laughs> so seeing that it one of our endangered birds was being sold in another country at an animal cafe is just so bizarre. And there were other, other animals being sold too, but it just it just surprised me that it's legal to do that, to sell an endangered bird from another country, but I don't know what happened to that bird. I don't think they could do anything from New Zealand. They couldn't get it back or anything because it didn't come from New Zealand technically, it must have come from a different breeding program uh, in a different country. So, but yeah, that's something I didn't know a lot of these animal cafes do is they do sell animals, exotic animals from different countries and it's completely legal even though it sounds like something that shouldn't be legal, you know what I mean? You also see a lot of foxes too, um, foxes in cafes, fennec foxes in cafes. These animals should not be pets and should not be kept in cafes. I don't know if they are taken from the wild or not. I don't know the history of them. But if they do need to be kept in captivity for whatever reason, they shouldn't be kept like this. Foxes especially, like, they're not pets. They need to be in these massive outdoor enclosures that replicate where they would come from originally if they do need to be kept in captivity. There are so many amazing animal sanctuaries around the world that you can visit instead if you want to see animals and you know these good animal sanctuaries will put in all the effort to replicate the animal's environment and it's way cooler trust me to see an animal happily in an area that looks like their natural environment instead of seeing a fox on a cat tree. So that's why I wanted to make this video, you know, if you are traveling somewhere like Japan or some other country that has animal cafes, please look into that cafe first because I'm, I hope there are good ones of wild animals, but I don't know. I don't think I would really recommend going to a wild animal cafe at all, to be honest, because I haven't seen any good ones online. I've seen a lot of good cat cafes though, but still do research. Um, if you want to see some like you know more exotic animals look around and see if there's any animal sanctuaries near you happen to be visiting new zealand anytime soon 
I would highly recommend you go to the Willowbank Wildlife Reserve. It's in Christchurch. I've been there many times. I've done a few vlogs there as well. I love going there. It's amazing. And even uh, the, most of the zoos in New Zealand, the animals they have come from rehabilitation program and I'm sure there if you don't live here there's probably some near you as well just look into it let me know what you think if you guys have ever visited an animal cafe please let me know your experience I would definitely love to know your experiences thanks for watching this video I'll see you guys in the next one bye